Hey guys, Trevor with Shadow Systems is Technical Tuesday, and today we're going to talk about the relationship between trigger take up and drop safety. So, everybody wants to have a gun that goes bang when you want it to and doesn't go bang when you don't want it to. Uh, and the system that we have selected as the kind of backbone for our pistols does a really good job of making sure that that happens. But one of the things that we have observed over time is that a lot of the aftermarket parts out there and a lot of the custom guns, especially those that uh, use an aftermarket trigger shoe and uh, advertise a very light or very reduced take up, are in a lot of ways compromising some of those safeties. So I wanted to just give a kind of a quick overview on what to look for, what you'll see in our guns and why we've done what we've done and then what to kind of look for in other guns so that you can be a little more educated on this topic. Okay, so I just went in the back and grabbed a gun out of the bin and I don't actually even know what it's gonna be. It appears to be a uh, Elite with a cool looking chamber flag. It is an Elite threaded barrel bronze gun. Okay, so uh, this operating system has three passive safeties, okay? One is located in the trigger one is the uh, firing pin safety on the inside that we'll look at. And then one is uh, the drop safety, they call it, in the back. Okay. Uh, two are very recognizable as safeties, and one of them you have to understand its operation to really understand how it's a drop safety. And that's the one that is sometimes compromised with short take-up triggers. Okay. Uh, let's talk first about the trigger shoe. So most modern striker-fired handguns have either an articulating trigger where the kind of bottom half of the trigger bends down uh, or they'll have a uh, safety in the face of the trigger. I think some people think that that safety is there so that the gun, you know, sort of knows when your finger is on the trigger. Um, that's, that's not its real main purpose. So its real purpose is if the gun is dropped in a downward uh, angle and it, it receives a really sharp blow on the, the rear of the slide or the rear of the frame and it comes to an immediate screeching halt, uh, you know, this trigger will theoretically keep moving and fire the gun unless there is something there to stop it. So this safety really is a drop safety in the sense that if the gun comes flying toward the ground and bam, receives a really sharp blow in the rear, if that trigger wants to keep moving, if it's hit hard enough for that trigger to keep coming downward, it's stopped by the safety, okay? Just, just to rule out inertia pulling the trigger if the gun is dropped, okay? Uh, the other safety is the one that's inside the slide. So it is a firing pin safety, and it is located right there. It's a circular feature. It is a little spring-loaded plunger. And uh, in its normal position, which means trigger not being pulled, in its normal position like it is right now, it is blocking the forward movement of the striker. Okay, so it's, it's got a spring that's pushing it downward, and when it's in its downward position, the striker can't go forward. The firing pin can't go forward. So if I were to push this down, the firing pin drops into position, and you probably can't see that, but I now can see the tip of the firing pin, right? If I were to pull the firing pin back up, the plunger drops back in place, and now the firing pin can't go forward again. So that safety is moved upward and out of the way as the trigger is being pulled by this feature here on the trigger bar, okay? It's colloquial call, colloquially called the bird's head, okay? Because uh, it looks like a little bird poking his head up above the frame. And as the trigger is being pulled, that is uh, going rearward and also raising up, and that is pushing the plunger out of the way at just the right time. So as the firing pin is being released at the rearward stroke of the trigger, uh, it can come flying forward with the safety out of the way. Okay, so that is a very positive safety. Uh, you know, it is fully blocking the firing pin. Okay, um, and then the last one is the one that I think is maybe not fully understood. Okay, uh, so let's see if I can even kind of show this. So in the rear of the trigger pack here, we have the silver trigger bar. You can see the trigger bar coming back. It forms kind of a cross. We call that the cruciform, right? And one side of the cruciform, when the trigger is forward, is supported by this little face right here. Okay, so there's a flat spot right there. So if I pull the trigger bar all the way forward, it is, in, it is, it is being supported from below now. It is being supported from below by that flat plastic 
surface, that shiny plastic surface is supporting it from below. So in order for the gun to fire, the trigger bar needs to come downward. It needs to get out of the way essentially and release the striker. So if the trigger bar is being supported from below, it can't drop out of the way, which is another way of preventing the striker from being able to move forward. Okay, well this is where it gets interesting. You'll notice that that, fire, that that cruciform is fully supported when I'm holding the trigger all the way to its forward position, right? As it comes backward, it is able to drop down and off the back of the drop safety. That happened as the trigger was going to the rear. Any trigger that advertises a short take up is essentially starting the trigger out pulled a little bit. By that I mean the, the cruciform and the trigger bar have already traveled back a little bit and its, its forward motion is restricted so that you feel a lighter take up. But if you, if you open the gun and you pull the trigger all the way forward, as forward as it will go, on guns that advertise that lighter take up, you will often see that that trigger bar is almost off the back of the ledge. So if you look at that drop safety, as, as you look down at it, you, there's, a, there's a little feature that you can kind of use as a visual reference, it's a little rectangular projection. And if you have a fully drop safe gun, it is completely covered up. You, it, it, the trigger bar is covering all that stuff up and it is fully supported. Guns that are kind of pushing the limits a little bit, it's not like that, okay? In fact, it'll be it'll look like it's almost coming off the back of the uh, of the drop safety. Okay, so I only share this so that you're aware that take up is correlated to drop safety. Okay, and when someone is advertising a very low take up trigger, they are essentially giving you a trigger that has already been pulled back a little bit. That's all it is. Those firing components have moved backward. It doesn't mean it's inherently absolutely unsafe. It just means that you started that trigger travel and you know, depending on how uh, uh, ambitious they are in removing take up, you, know, you might be kind of on the edge. Now, early in our history, we did do triggers that advertised a reduced take up. And we were well aware of this whole issue at the time. And our version of reduced take up was like, you know, just a little tiny bit, okay? Uh, there was still plenty of pre-travel, and in my opinion, we have always had EDC-safe EDC safe, drop-safe triggers. We left way more take-up in there than I think any of our competitors did. Um, since then, as we move more and more into kind of the tactical space, and you know, our, our guns are seeing you know, real use in some dangerous places, uh, we've got all that take-up in there. And so if you pick up a shadow gun, and you're like, wow, that's that's kind of a long trigger pull. Realize that was a deliberate decision. We think that long trigger pull is important because it means the drop safety is fully operational. Frankly, we also think that long trigger pull is important just from like a threat management perspective in case, God forbid, you have someone at gunpoint and you're scared because you will be. Uh, we, we just want to make sure that, you know, tragedy doesn't inadvertently happen because you have a light take up on your trigger, okay? So you should feel that trigger moving. No matter how much blood has drained from your fingers, you should feel that trigger moving. And so having the full take up there is, is pretty important, okay? So that's the relationship. If you pull one of these guns apart and you look and you move the trigger bar back and forth like I'm doing, you'll see what I mean. You'll see how the trigger bar gets fully supported by that drop safety on the trigger housing. And if you have an all aftermarket trigger and you, and you play this game, you will see how it is sort of less supported if it's one that advertises less take up in the gun. Okay, uh, hope that was helpful. As always, we're here. If you have questions, let us know. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to some of the videos we have next week because uh, we're gonna try to blow some things up. All right, we'll talk to you guys later, bye.